Before you know it, she talks. Before you know it, she walks. Before you know it, she knows you. Before you know it, she has a heart. Before you know you're pregnant, when your baby's no bigger than a grain of rice. Before she's a twinkle in your eye, that's when you need to take folic acid every day. After that, it's too late to prevent some serious birth defects. Folic acid now, before you know it. Kingdom Warriors Music, wage your wars for the kingdom. Let music be your medicine. Forget trying to get all buddy buddy in my face I got the holy heat 
feet strapped, cocked, ready to blow All the enemy has to say is when they wanna go I'ma give you a gospel thrashing, ain't no relaxing Once the Bible cracks open, man, that's what's happening We're God chosen at work, yo, we ain't playing Everybody knows where the enemy will be laying You are not alone the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still and know that he is God. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he will be with you. Be still. When I walk through deep waters, I know you will be with me when I stand in the fire I will not be overcome through the valley of the shadow I will I am not alone You will go before me You will never leave me I am not alone I am not alone You will go before me You will never leave me In the midst of deep sorrow I see your light is breaking through The dark of night will not overtake me I'm pressing into you Lord, you fight my every battle And I will not fear I am not alone I am not alone You will go before me You will never leave me I am not alone I am strength, you're my defender, you're my refuge in the storm, through these trials you've been faithful, you bring healing to my soul, I am not alone.
I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. Good day, everyone. Happy Palm Sunday, March 24, 2024, in the year of the open door. And this is Chaplain Dr. Shirley Caniff, General Manager of Faith Talks Live Multimedia, here at the New Kingdom Warriors and the Joshua Connection for Families New Wine Music NFT Podcast Project. I hope I'm saying that right. Well, anyways, um, today we have a special edition, pretty much an extension of uh, a part of adverse childhood experiences uh, that you all have become familiar with within the last year uh, uh, when we when the world saw the horrors through the movie The Sound of Freedom, which. Um, aired July 4th in all the theaters across the United States on um, Independence Day, um, bringing to attention the, um, the, 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 you know, the, the warfare and the damage this is causing to society and to children um, as little as infants, okay, and, and especially the mothers and the mothers and the children. Okay, and individuals caught up in um, human trafficking and human slavery. Um, this is um, uh, have, has always been, but it's coming out of the woodwork, especially after the pan- pandemic um, hit. And it's a it's a social pandemic, and not only social, but it's a psychosocial, spiritual, and physical pandemic. All all three of, I mean, all four aspects of. Um, it's hitting all four aspects of hum, human, of humanity, of humanity in general, and uh, so we talked about it. Uh, we began to, to speak about it um, in terms of uh, the uh, ch- you know adverse childhood experiences. But we're going to go further into it as to what the church can do when it comes to the h- human uh, trafficking and um, what what the call. And the mandate is for every spirit-filled, baptized believer, whether you're Catholic or non-Catholic, have in combat in this intrinsic evil. Okay, so we have Father Chris Ela from the Divine Mercy Shrine in Stockbridge. Um, is, he's going to come on and say a few things about it um, and what the church, uh, it, he's going to describe what it is. He's going to bring in some statistics that will horrify you um, and and make you keenly aware of the problem and what we are to do as as a corporate body and also as individuals um, that make up society and then make up the family. And and, and he's going to really hit you between the eyes as to why you know, in, in, in the level of spiritual warfare that the enemy is right now wanting to um, uh, meet out uh, to all families throughout the earth. Um, uh, he knows his time is short. Uh, and he knows that the kingdom mandate is to bring the kingdom of God to the earth uh, through baptized believers. But, you know, what he's trying to do is cause division, and uh, he's going after the the younger generation, the generation that you know, which which is going to eventually be adults, and so um, he is that's his target, and uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna um, stand for it. So Father Chris Alar is going to give you the marching orders of what to do. Okay, all right. Well, God bless you, and um, I I would suggest. Getting a notepad, writing down some um, some key notes, 
and then act you know faith without works is what dead okay so god bless you again enjoy palm sunday and we are coming to that very special time of holy week hope all of you will make the tritium or have some kind of reflection um, of the um, life death and resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ and what that means for you your loved ones in all of humanity god bless you Well, good morning and thank you everybody for joining us here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy. We are coming to you live here, live streamed uh, from Stockbridge, Massachusetts. And today's topic um, is one that some might say, well, Father, why are you talking about this? Uh, well, because the church has just issued some recent statements uh, about the criticalness of this topic and raising awareness uh, we're going to be talking today about human trafficking, uh, sex trafficking, and people might say, well, Father, that's a political and social issue. Actually, it's the most um, religious issue because souls are at stake, not, uh, not just because of the perpetrators, uh, but also those who do the trafficking. They are, they are souls that are majorly in trouble. So we have to talk about this, raise awareness, and help protect the victims most of all. Uh, this is a critical topic, so we appreciate you joining us. As I was telling the group here at the Shrine today, um, as I was finishing doing my research late last night, I really had a hard time sleeping um, because of what, what, what these statistics show us and what is happening in reality. And so let us begin with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you please help us to help this world that is so broken to be able to give us the grace to open our hearts to receive that grace, to turn away from defilement and, and, and these issues that have threatened so many souls. We ask, Lord God, that you give us the purity of Mary as an example to be able to live chastely and to be able to care for the most vulnerable. And we ask St. Faustina that you intercede for us today here at your shrine. And we hope and ask and beg and plead for your mercy on the victims and the perpetrators. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And please don't get angry at me because I mentioned mercy on the perpetrators. I know it's a natural reaction to say they deserve no mercy. Well, actually, what we need to do is pray for their conversion. We, we are not saying they should not be held to justice sake. Absolutely, they need to be held to justice. Um, and, and for centuries, the church has even justified capital punishment when somebody's a threat to society. But what we're talking about here uh, that had to be very clear is we have to pray for their conversion because as Catholics and Christians, we can wish the damnation of no one. One of the worst things we could ever say is, I hope you rot in hell. That actually is placing a curse on someone. And so we have to be very careful. But am I here to justify mercy on them? Yes and no. Um, we want no soul loss. We pray for the conversion. But we have to be aware of these shocking statistics, these shocking uh, realities and hold them accountable to stop this. So, um, 100%. This is this is got this has got to be addressed. They have to be not only reprimanded but but imprisoned and removed uh, to harm from harming any other people. And so, let's go ahead and look at our our first slide. If brother can uh, brother Mark can show it now. This. Human trafficking is a $150 billion a year industry, and it's on the rise. Do you know that it has now become, this is shocking, human trafficking and sex trafficking, because human trafficking is more than just sex trafficking. It also includes, for, includes forced labor, uh, enslavement. We'll talk about that. But do you know it has become now more profitable than two of the most major illegal industries? Three, actually drug trafficking, 
It is now more money in human trafficking and then drug trafficking. That's because Satan would rather have souls than things. This has also become now more money than arms dealing, guns and, and weapons. And it has become more money than even the wildlife uh, trade that of poaching and whatnot. Those are three of the biggest illegal industries. This has become bigger than all. This is shocking. Now, why it, it, Satan is after is because you know in, in in human trafficking it's the soul, the perpetrators and the traffickers. Their souls are being lost at alarming rates. Satan loves this, and in in drug trafficking you sell the product once. But in human trafficking, the children are sold over and over again. And this is why this industry has become so much money. Now, selling children, this is another shocking thing. People are adopting children. This is why it's so critical that adoptions be still held to a mother and a father. A child deserves both a mother and a father. What they're finding are these single adoptions and uh, same-sex adoptions, many are finding out that they are adopting the children to sexually abuse them. This is, again, shocking. Um, and it's not being discussed. And what's even more shocking is all this human trafficking. We talk about children, and we will more. There's actually more adults. There's actually more adults in human trafficking than children. And we'll talk about that. And, and you know, there's not any one country that's immune. All countries in some way um, are involved and we need to be able to educate the public and the media needs to talk about this. Um, basically, what is it? Okay, human trafficking, including sex trafficking, which is part of human trafficking, is the business of stealing freedom for a profit. Hence the title of the movie, Sound of Freedom. When I first heard that, I was like, it's kind of a weird title. But that's exactly what trafficking is. It is stealing freedom for a profit. We're going to show a video. Usually I don't show it this early in the talk, but this video is so good. It's only two and a half minutes. It's two minutes, 29 seconds. And this video is going to show you how they are doing it using social media, the internet, um, and don't worry if you don't have it or you don't see it right now, we'll leave it posted. So let's go ahead and have Mark show, Brother Mark show this video. By the way, many of us have heard that term, sex trafficking, but what does that actually mean? Well, tonight, we're going to break down what it means to help you understand and why you should actually care. Americans care a lot about money. We talk about jobs and taxes and paychecks, but here's what we don't talk about. Right here in the United States, there is a thriving underground economy based on selling children for sex. If sex sells, then business is good. Look at all the money. It was almost a billion dollars in this study. But these dirty profits come at a huge cost. This is how sex traffickers do business. It's about supply and demand. First, they need someone to sell. Traffickers target children in their own homes. They find them by combing through social media profiles looking to spark a conversation. The trafficker targets preteens and teens by finding an end, something to bond over and earn their trust. It could be the promise of a modeling career. They might buy them drugs or alcohol or provide protection from an already dangerous situation at home. Traffickers gain psychological control and use violent threats to force victims to stay. Once the child is isolated from family and friends, the trafficker puts them up for sale. This is where the demand comes in. Traffickers use internet sites to connect with buyers or Johns, but calling them Johns is too polite. They are abusers. They are purchasing kids for sex. So who are these buyers? Court records show they've been teachers, pastors, cops, and judges. They could be the guy next door. The trafficker gets the money. The buyer gets sex. The child victim gets exploited and sold. So how is this different from prostitution, pornography, or other sexual acts? These victims are minors. Legally, they cannot consent. This isn't the movies. 
It's not like Pretty Woman or Taken. Richard Gere is not the buyer. Liam Neeson isn't there to save the day. This is sexual exploitation. This is trafficking. This is modern day slavery. It's selling girls. Well, thank you for watching that video. As I was telling the group here at the Shrine, I, I watched just tons and tons of videos. And I thought this short little one really captured what's happening. Social media is the way that they are being recruited, especially the children, because social media is sometimes isolated people and they'll prey on that. These predators, um, they'll they'll make sure that they find the, the, the weak victim. In, in my opinion, next to abortion, this is the most heinous and 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 vile of all sins because you are hurting and destroying the life in, of a child and um and adults too uh, but especially of the children as i said we we should rather die than we would ever harm a child um uh, it, it's it's just mind-boggling to me um, but why is it so bad? Okay, um, human trafficking violates the sanctity. Now, I'm going to give you some church teaching here. The sanctity, the dignity, and the fundamental rights of the human person. And um, basically, it, 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 Benedict called it a crime against humanity because he said it's the recruitment, transportation, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of force, fraud, or coercion for the purpose of exploitation, all right? And it's taking away their freedom, and the freedom is the most funnel out, fundamental element of the human person. Why do you think Satan is attacking this? All right, people are trafficked in just more ways than sexually, all right? Forced labor, forced begging, forced marriage, Organ harvesting. Our organ harvesting, wait till you hear what we got to talk about on that. Um, and many others. Now, how do they do this? Well, let's start with forced labor. Advertisements, job, job ads, job offers is the most common tactic for trafficking because labor is the most prevalent of all human trafficking, forced labor, enslavement, even though sex trafficking is the most known. All right, so um, as I said, sexually the, is the most known, such as escort services and prostitutions. Uh, but, and the, the worst is the children as slaves or even soldiers. Children are fighting in these wars around the world as soldiers. Now, what is the statistic? This is kind of surprising. Children are not the number one. Let's go to our next slide, Brother Mark, and show it. Women, adult women are the number one victim, they're 50%. Okay, so adult women are 50%, children are 30% of victims, and men are 20% of victims. Now, the number one method though is not violence. To get these people, it is deception. How do they use that? They get them to trust, You get they get you to trust them, so trust them, even fall in love with them, and then they threaten you, threaten your family, and there's no way out. So most traffickers are never convicted, they're never caught because this happens over state lines or, or national borders. But here's one of the most shocking for you. You know how earlier we prayed for the predator, the trafficker, because their souls are jeopardy? You would probably figure most are men, wouldn't you? Maybe at least 95% are men. Actually, 40% are women. Now, 50% of women are the victims. Now I'm talking about the perpetrators, the predators. 40% are women. This is mind boggling. 50% women are the victims and 40% of the perpetrators are women. That's shocking. Now, where does it happen the most in the United States? And then I'll talk about the different countries. One report, surprising, Nevada, Missouri, and Nebraska, right in the heartland as the leading states. Guess what are the two biggest cities? Houston, Houston, Texas, 
and L.A. are the largest cities for human trafficking. I think a lot because of the Hispanic population in both of those. Now, another study showed the biggest states are California, Texas, and Florida. But all states have reported it. Now, let's go to our next slide, if Brother Mark can show. 365,000 kids go missing in the U.S. every day. That's 1,000 a day. 1,000 children a day in the U.S. go missing, and 30% of those are trafficked. That means we have 330 kids every single day just in this country who are abducted and trafficked. Now, around the world, it's over a million children a year. Now, do you know the most common age for girls to be trafficked? 15 to 17. These are runaways. These are people angry at their parents. They, they take off. They trust people. They start falling in love. They fall into sexual relations. 15 to 17 is the most common age for girls. But guess what it is for boys? Under 12 under 12 and so how do you know it now if you ever see something really specific in like an airport i'm in i'm in airports all the time i've never really looked for this i'm going to start looking for this now do you know what to look for well first of all you look for if there seems to be a domineering attitude towards a child like they're not they don't let the child speak okay like if you say hello and the child's not allowed to speak to you Another thing is they mark them with barcodes like tattoos, tattoos like barcodes. You know the two most common places they put them? Inside the lip. Because it's really easy for them when nobody's looking to pull the lip and just see it. And the other on the bottom of the foot. These are two places you would not openly see a tattoo or a barcode. They treat them like cattle. But they can easily just flip the lip it's tattooed right there or on the bottom of the foot and so if you ever have a chance and you see something like that you have to report it immediately um very shocking um do you know the leading country now a lot of people say the united states no the number one place where children are abducted is the philippines my love for the Philippines. And when I was there, I used to see these children living in the median. I wanted to take I, I, the one that broke my heart was this little girl. She must have been only 10 or 11 years old. And we were driving to the conference and we were at the stoplight. And I looked over at the median and they had slept all night in between the, the, the roads in, the, in the, the median. All these children and I'm just fixated on it. And I see this little girl, she's like 10 or 11, and she's holding the baby, a brand newborn baby. And she's holding the baby. It's like, it's like six o'clock in the morning. And she's just holding it like this. And I said to the, to the, to the person I was staying with, I said, you know, what, what do you think happened to the mother? And he said, she probably is the mother. Like 12, 13, 14 years old. And so the Philippines is, oh, we, we just, wow. I, I mean, God, they are a suffering servant. Um, so the Philippines is the leading country for the victims. And, <clears throat> and the other is the Middle East, Middle Eastern countries. But where it happens, some of the most is the United States and Mexico. That's where some of the most crimes happen, where it occurs. Now, we mentioned a second ago that human trafficking is not just sexual. It is also labor, forced labor. Now, these may be workers in food processing factories, especially outside of the United States, places like China and Mexico, waiters or cooks at restaurants. I remember my first job <laughs> was at Ponderosa. And I was in high school. I already look young now, but well, you can imagine how young I looked in high school. And one woman reported if I was a violation to the child labor law. <laughs> because, you know, as a wait staff, as, as a waiter or cook, this is common. This is common. Um, construction workers, agricultural work, laborers, fishermen. You'll be shocked at this. I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Housekeeping staff at hotels. My grandmother. 
pulled out of school at sixth grade to go work as a maid, not quite the same because she was not abused. We're talking abuse here. Domestic help in private residences, and of course, sex trafficked women uh, and children in brothels, spas, massage parlors, very shocking. Let's go to our next slide. So the umbrella term that's used is human trafficking to define all these forms of modern slavery, not just sexual, as I keep saying, but all these other labors, forced labors, this is all under the, the realm of human trafficking, which includes forced labor, sexual trafficking, and all that. Okay, so all these are forms of modern slavery. Now, what is the biggest sign if somebody is probably forced to labor is if they're living with their employer, but they won't tell you any details. If they're living with their employer, usually it's a threat. Um, I'm going to talk to this. I'm going to talk about this more. Usually you can't speak to them. They'll confiscate their, their identification papers. Uh, they'll threaten deportation. Um, and so sometimes they're actually living with the employer. That's a very telling sign. Now, according to the United Nations, and I'm, trust me, I'm not a big fan of the United Nations, but the International Labor Organization said the global estimates of modern slavery is nearly 50 million people. 50 million today are victims of modern slavery. Now, how do they get these people? not just children, but adults. Traffickers will lure them in with false promises of good jobs, educating them, or worse, loving them. The, the young girls fall in love with these charismatic predators. Um, so once enticed, the traffickers will keep their victims, as I said, by confiscating their identification documents, threats of violence against them and their family, or physical or psychological abuse. Now, let's talk about some misconceptions because there's a lot of misconceptions here that were surprising to me. All right, let's go to our next slide. First of all, there is no typical profile. Everybody thinks there's a typical profile. There is not. Anyone can be a victim, regardless of sex, age, race, citizenship, education. There is no profile. All the experts have dug deep into this. There is no profile. So <clears throat> let's look at this. Myth number one, human trafficking occurs mostly in the form of sexual exploitation. This is false. The truth is actually there's more forced labor trafficking than sex trafficking. Both are a huge problem. All right, myth number two, most victims of human trafficking are kidnapped and do not know their captors. False. According to the International Human Traffic Institute, kidnapping victims is a risk to these traffickers. They don't usually go that route. Uh, traffickers are more likely to recruit and groom their victims. If you see your child getting closer and closer to somebody that you don't know or you don't trust, this could be happening, all right? They offer them emotional support. Again, false opportunities for a better life, solid employment, giving them education, even as I said, promises of romance. This is garbage. And so this is a big myth. Number three, myth number three, legal businesses, do not profit from forced labor or exploitation, at least in the United States, because it's illegal. False. Human trafficking does occur, obviously, in illicit underground places like brothels and, and in the drug trade, but it's found in legitimate businesses. You know, um, we were just meeting um, with, uh, with some of our managers yesterday, and the Marians for a long time have uh, had a, a policy not to invest in, in Nike shoe company because of their known forced labor, child labor uh, in foreign countries. Um, so you gotta be careful. Even hotels, construction agriculture, restaurants, they can, they can use this. So be careful who you patronize. All right, last one, myth number four, <clears throat> victims are always kept in chains and physically abused false. Let's go to our next slide. There's a picture or an example of it. That's not always true. The truth is one need not be kept in chains or beaten to be a victim of human trafficking. Sometimes they use methods of fraud and coercion to imprison their victims. Not a chain, but a threat. Not a, not a handcuff, but coercion. 
and they could take different forms. Like I said, threaten to kill them or their loved ones, tricking the victims uh, into believing that they owe them a debt. It, you know, I'll let you work off your debt. Otherwise, I'm going to send you to prison. This is all a lie. Threatening, as I said, deportation for foreign victims. And I'm sorry, one more, one, uh, one more myth. The problem is so big that there's nothing you can do about it. False. False. Um, there are movies now raising awareness. Um, this Catherine Jean Lopez wrote this article about sex trafficking is not a right-wing conspiracy theory. Why do I bring this up? Let's go to our next slide. You remember the movie Sound of Freedom? That came out last summer during um, 4th of July weekend. Now, that Sound of Freedom beat Indiana Jones at the box office last year on Independence Day weekend, July 4th. But the movie has been severely attacked. I can't even believe it, but it is. Everything good gets attacked as alarmist right-wing propaganda, conspiracy theory. So what, what happened? Okay, both lead actor Jim Caviezel, we mostly know him from playing Jesus in The Passion, and Tim Ballard, he's the former Homeland Security agent that Jim Caviezel plays in the movie, have been criticized for accusing Hollywood of being behind a lot of this child sex trafficking. Um, criticizing, saying questionable things about Hollywood. Rolling Stone magazine, used to read it as a kid, won't touch it now, won't touch it. Rolling Stone magazine attacks Sound of Freedom as a superhero movie for dads with brain worms. They said it preaches dramatic, and then it, it goes on saying dramatic ra raids may make for good entertainment, but in real life, the process of helping trafficking survivors is far lengthier and more complicated. Of course it is. This is a movie. This is not a documentary. Okay? But it's trying. It knows the American public. Americans won't sit down on the most part, even though I love documentaries. I don't really watch movies, but I'll watch a documentary. And the, the documentary is not what the Americans are going to watch. They're going to watch a movie. So Hollywood used that to be able, or at least Jim Caviezel did, use that. Um, it's not a documentary. This is Hollywood. So why, why criticize it? Of course, it's not going to be exactly the, the litigation process. It's a story, but it raises awareness. Sound of Freedom shows that you don't have to be Satan himself to harm children. Some people just fall into it. Others because of their uh, it, it falling to their passions. Others choose it and are sick. Like I said, adopting children just to have sexual relations with them. It boggles my mind. Uh, let's talk about the other form. <clears throat> this one's shocking to me, organ harvesting. Please be careful, you need an organ transplant. This is good, the church allows organ donation and organ transplant, but you gotta be careful who you are dealing with and demand to know the source from which it comes. There is a good article, of all places, NBC, by Sophora Safara Smith that says China is forcefully harvesting organs from prisoners. And they determined this from a big tribunal. China's organ transplant trade is worth over a billion dollars a year. And the organs of marginalized groups detained in Chinese prisons are being forcefully harvested, sometimes while the patients are still alive. This is according to a very detailed international tribunal out of London. Now, more than a million and a half detainees are in Chinese prison camps. They are being killed for their organs to, uh, to serve a booming transplant trade. Um, they said, this organization said that the practice is of unmatched wickedness. I, I equate it to abortion. Um, uh, uh, unmatched, uh, equating it to the mass killings committed in the last century. Uh, Chinese websites are advertising hearts, lungs, and kidneys for sale and available to book in advance, which this tribunal found out suggested that the victims were killed upon ordering of the organ. 
<clears throat> so the Chinese prisons would get an order for three hearts. They would go take three prisoners, remove the heart while they're alive. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let's go to our next slide. A healthy liver, for example, can be sold for $160,000. One liver. And there you see that slide of, of organ harvesting. Please make sure that when you're looking for an organ for a loved one that you don't go to some of these sites. My goodness. Well, we can save the money. We don't have to go through the insurance. We'll, 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 we'll find a doctor that'll make the transplant, but we'll find the organ. No. You got to make sure. The United Nations, like I said, I'm hardly a fan, but they're concerned about this. They even did an article in Forbes magazine a couple years ago. Shocking that the most common organs removed from these prisoners are hearts, kidneys, livers, and corneas. Can you imagine cutting out your eye while you're alive? Concerns were raised by the UN with the Chinese government in 2006 and 7. No response. No response at all. There needs to be sanctions on this. News of further human rights violations have now come, including atrocities against certain ethnic groups there in China that are being tortured and abused, raped, sexually violated, separating children from the parents, forced sterilizations, forced abortions, forced labor, and much more. These reports have resulted in nothing has been changed there. The UN has done nothing about it. They've just raised awareness. Now, this doesn't give us much hope that things are going to get better. And their target seems to be these people called Falun Gong, which was a outlawed uh, kind of a, a certain uh, strange uh, pagan type of practice and uh, it was outlawed, so people practicing that. Yeah, it's not good. That's horrible they practice, but you don't deserve to have your organs removed because of it. And the Uyghur Muslims um, that are being detained. These are predominantly the victims. And so please pray for them. All right, so now you see all the shocking numbers. Now, what can you do about this? This is what I didn't even know. Um, I thank Chris Sparks for doing, helping me to research this. One of the best things you could do is become a shepherd. What does that mean, Father? USCCB.org slash shepherd. What is this? Let's go to our next slide. Shepherd is an acronym. See the capital letters bolded on your slide? S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D. Stop human trafficking and exploitation. Protect, help, empower, and restore dignity. So it's the acronym, SHEPHERD. Now, what is this? This is a church base. You want to do something? You want to help? Get involved with this, even if it's just a simple, small, modest donation. Maybe it's praying for them. Maybe it's um, offering your mass for them. What is it? All right, it's a program that educates the lay people and religious leaders. I'm a, a religious. I, I haven't even heard about this until I was doing the research for this. Um, about human trafficking from a Catholic perspective. Wow. It helps fight forced labor and commercial sexual exploitation at very local level. See, at the local level, if we all did our job at the local level, there's not a national or international problem. If you are from a parish or community group and you want to respond to the church's call for a commitment against modern-day slavery, Shepherd is for you. All right, again, usccb.org slash shepherd. Let's go to our next line, slide, sorry. The request, you, what you can basically do if you go to that site, you can also request the online shepherd leader guide if you want to do something um, and use the shepherd engagement resources. And you can help organize. They will help you organize workshops, discussion groups, prayer sessions. To me, even just prayer. How many of us are praying daily for this? I got to admit, every morning I do my daily offering. I pray for our, um, uh, my brothers, my relatives, the benefactors, the married helpers, and all my friends. Brothers, relatives, benefactors, and friends. I pray every day. And every day God puts somebody new on my heart, either a past friend or a current relative or a current Marian helper, 
A lot of them are based on letters you send me, masses that I do for you. But I never realized I was not praying to end this atrocity. One of the greatest, in me, next to abortion, the most vile. And, um, and so you can help. You can do prayer sessions, community outreach, service, service activities. You can, you can really do this. Uh, they have a guide. The guides, they have presentations and other resources that they've created to educate communities about human trafficking. They can do all that for you. Um, and how for you to respond to this problem and how others can respond to this problem. Uh, you can also go to the movie and discussion guide resources. They even have movies that you can watch. If you don't think teenagers or college age students would want to be active, at least they'll watch maybe the movie. Hence the purpose of Sound of Freedom. All right. So I mentioned earlier, and this one was shocking to me, another great group based on the Catholic faith in the Catholic Church is called Compass. C-O-M-P-A-S-S. -S. What is that? Coalition C of Organizations O and Ministries M promoting P, the abolition A of slavery S at C. S. I bet you never thought of this. I'm a huge fisherman. I grew up on the water. You know how I learned how to swim? My dad, we were out and threw me uh, off the dock. I, I, I think I was four, and I was petrified, and he threw me off the dock. He wasn't going to let me drown. He was there, but, you know, as a little kid, you know, you know, it really teaches trust. And threw me off the dock, and that's how I learned to swim. Boy, you'll be amazed how you can learn how to do something. Um, and, and so I grew up on the water. I grew up fishing. I've almost lost my life several times on the water. But I never prayed for what's going on at sea right now. I had no idea. Human trafficking at sea is one of the worst global problems. You would never think of this. Let's go to our next slide. The unregulated fishing industry in many countries, coupled with the global demand for cheap seafood, create a lawless wild west, which trafficking at sea flourishes. Migrants are recruited into fishing crews by false promises of living wages. Women are found, uh, found that they think they're going out to sea to provide cooking and service like, um, you know, cleaning on the ships. They end up becoming sex slaves. And here's what's shocking. Many of these boats now will go out to sea for over a year or two. So there's, where are you going to go? If you're a victim, you're going to jump overboard? You got nowhere to go. And so many are, are given false promises of wages. Many maritime traffic brokers and recruiters hold legal permits to recruit and maintaining uh, uh, for um, um, uh, personnel agencies like headhunters, showing that it's really deep, this corruption in this industry. It's very calculated, very organized. And so facing a shortage of fishing crews, many trafficker captains kidnap and enslave. This is piracy, right? We don't even know what's happening. And fish species are dwindling. So um, they're not close to land anymore like they used to be. So vessels would go out to the seas, high seas for years. Now in trapping, enslaving the people. So slavery in the seafood industry and again, I love seafood. As a Catholic on Fridays, that's what we eat. But um, the processing and canning facilities back on land is where a lot of the forced labor human trafficking happens. They're preparing the seafood to export. So what is the aim of Compass? If you want to get involved through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. State Department, surprisingly, and the USCCB, OK, the USCCB is implementing Compass to strengthen the coordination, collaboration and capacity of Catholics, you worldwide to respond to sea trafficking, especially in ministries in seaports. Do you live like here in Massachusetts, um, Situate or um, Nantucket or or uh, New Bedford, where the whaling used to be? These are all seaports. 
Do you have any idea what's happening? Well, Compass is putting little groups in those port towns. If you live in one of those port towns, ask. Uh, identifying, screening, and responding to victims of maritime trafficking globally. Compass will increase communication and collaboration among Catholic entities and other partners engaged in countering maritime trafficking. Their plan is online. You can find it. I just wanted to touch on this. All right. Now, what about the Vatican? What has the Vatican said about this? Well, not enough, but they're coming more, and they got something huge coming next month. So listen to this. The Vatican has released an online guide to combat the $150 billion human trafficking and human sex trafficking industry. This You can find this on Catholic News Agency. All right, let's go to our next slide. They published a handbook. I looked through this. It's very good. It's called Pastoral Orientations on Human Trafficking. It has 10 sections and each analyzes human trafficking from a different angle and gives you recommendations, what you can do. Now, the recommendations range from targeting and prosecuting not only the traffickers, but the consumers. And this is critical because you're gonna find out it's friends, neighbors, maybe even family. Um, and so they, they aid the victims in spiritual and psychological recovery very important. So the Vatican is going to host a conference focused on the implementation of these guidelines next month. If you want to get involved, please go online. Go online. And, um, and the, the Vatican next month is going to have a conference focused on implementing these guidelines in this online guide called Pastoral Orientations on Human Trafficking. Again, there's no excuse when you go to judgment, when I go to judgment, we are going to be judged on what did we do to protect our brothers and sisters. And so more attention needs to be placed on the consumers who drive the demand for human trafficking, according to the Vatican, in addition to the traffickers themselves who supply it. Now, let's look at a quote from this guide. Brother Mark, if you could put up on the screen, this is a quote from the guide that I read. People who generate the demand share the real responsibility for the destructive impact of their behavior on other human persons. The Vatican's blaming the end user, all right, and for the moral values violated in the process. The buying of sexual services in all forms, including pornography, even if you're just looking at pornography. Well, Father, I'm not a child abuser. Are you viewing pornography? Because if you are, it's indirectly developing the human sex trait. Even if you're viewing adult pornography, because those models that you view, you don't know. Many of them are enslaved. Some of them could be in chains. And, and, and it's, it's sad, but a lot of people who view pornography, I hear it all the time in the confessional. It happens, but do we realize that we're contributing to the enslavement of people, cyber sex. I, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but that contributes to it. Strip clubs and erotic dancing venues. These are all offenses against human dignity and human integrity that fuel human trafficking. You know, when you view pornography, the mystics told us in um, exorcisms that there's a demon placed behind every image. And when you view an image of pornography, your window to your soul is your eyes. And, and, and when you view it, you are inviting, you're, well, you're not inviting, nobody wants this. You're opening the door. It's like opening your door during a blizzard. Some's gonna get inside. And so when you view it, <clears throat> the mystics tell us in, in exorcisms that there's demons placed behind every image. And that when you view it, that demon can enter your soul. Now, it may not be possession, but it certainly can be oppression or obsession. This guide goes on to recommend that states consider criminalizing those who take advantage of prostitution, use it, or other sources of sexual exploitation provided by those who have been trafficked. 
Let's look at what Pope Francis said at his World a Day of Prayer address. Let's read. Let's go to our next slide. If there are so many young women victims of trafficking who end up on the streets, it is because many men here demand these services and are willing to pay for their pleasure. I wonder then, is the principal cause of trafficking really the traffickers? I believe the principal cause is the unscrupulous selfishness of the many hypocrites in our world. Yes, arresting traffickers is an obligation of justice. I talked about that. But the true solution is the conversion of hearts, cutting off demand to dry out the market. That's why I said we got to pray. I, Father, I can't pray for the perpetrator. I talked to one person that wanted to help, and, and they said, but I, I just can't pray for the perpetrator. And I said, I think that's what God's calling you to do. Not that they get out of justice, not that they be released. That's false mercy. But their soul not to be lost to Satan by being converted. That's hard to do. It's one of the hardest things the person told me. She said, I just don't know if I can do this. And I said, we had like a two-hour phone call, and I said, this is maybe what God is asking you to do. How many people are praying for the victims? Tons. How many are praying for the perpetrators? Almost none. We want them in some way to, 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 to rot in hell, but we never want a soul to be lost. <clears throat> yes, they need to pay earthly justice, and they may pay eternal justice unless they repent and have a conversion of heart. That may be what God is asking you to do. Benedict XVI wrote in Caritas and Veritate in 2009, purchasing is always a moral and not simply economic act. Hence, the consumer has a specific social responsibility, which goes hand in hand with the social responsibility of the enterprise. In other words, he's saying it's not just the people trafficking, but those who are buying the services. So we need to pray not just for the victim, but also the abuser and the trafficker. There's three people involved here. One is the victim. We always got to pray for them first and foremost. Their lives have been shattered. Their lives have been turned upside down. Sometimes it results in suicide. We got to pray first and foremost for the victim. But we really, as Christian Catholics, can't end there. As much as it seems crazy to believe, God loves the other two as well. Who are the other two, Father? Well, the trafficker, okay, the trafficker, the one who's going out and organizing this horrid, horrendous activity. Their souls are in jeopardy. They're putting the making of the almighty dollar as their God rather than the life of the little child. And then the end user. The end user might just say, well, I'm weak. I can't help it. No. Paul tells us we can't let our passions overrun us or we will lose our soul. And that can be, you could be, well, I'm not an end user. Thank God, Father. Well, yeah, you might not be going out getting a child. But again, are you looking at pornography? Are you um, going to massage parlors? Are you doing these things? Because if you are, then it is a possibility that you're contributing to that. And so Pope Francis calls human trafficking a crime against humanity as well as Benedict did. There's an article in CNA, Catholic News Agency, where Francis said trafficking in people is the worst manifestation of the co-modification of others. What is co-modification? It's treating them as a commodity, people as cattle, as things. All right, last page. It not only hurts victims, but it destroys the humanity of those doing the trafficking or taking advantage of victims because it denies them access to the abundant life of Jesus. You know why? By being outside of a state of grace, they've cut themselves off from Christ. 
He said the son of God became man to indicate to all human beings the path of realization of their humanity and conformity with the uniqueness and unrepeatability of each. Unfortunately, the present world is sadly characterized by situations that hinder the fulfillment of this mission. What does that mean? It means, everybody, if you are involved in any way, shape, or form in this, by being a sin of commission, by being a child abuser, I pray for your soul, I pray for my soul, I pray for everyone's soul, but being an indirect user, like I mentioned through massage parlors or pornography, or being a trafficker yourself, being an end user, if you are any one of those, you are guilty by sin of commission. And if you're not praying and really trying to help, then you are guilty by sin of omission. Every day, a Sunday in the creed, we pray for the sins we have done and, the, and for what we have failed to do. Remember that famous expression, um, silence is a sign of acceptance by doing nothing. We have to do something, even if it's just praying a little prayer each day. You know, added together what power of grace that could have on converting these wretched hearts. And again, I'm not trying to point the finger. I'm, I'm wretched in my own ways. I certainly have never abused a child, never would. I would die before I would abuse a child. But somebody can make a long list of my other faults. So I'm, I'm not trying to just point fingers here. The reality is this is Catholic social teaching. So if you're asking, Father, why are you getting into politics? It's Catholic social teaching. Now, the USCCB has addressed this, and they have an article online called Catholic Social Teaching and the Church's Fight to End Human Trafficking. What does it say? Catholic Social Teaching proclaims the dignity of the human person and the sanctity of all human life, not just in the womb. We're accused of that often. You Catholics only care about the baby in the womb. No, this shows we care about all life. Each person is made in the image of God and is loved immeasurably by God and has inherent worth. That's why we have to protect each human life in the womb and out. Modern day slavery where people are bought and sold like merchandise inherently rejects this principle, showing absolute contempt contempt for what God created, his highest creation. And for this reason, eliminating human trafficking and empowering survivors has been a huge issue for the Catholic Church. So you don't think the Catholic Church, you think it's evil? Read some of the stuff it's doing here and what it's trying to do, but nobody's listening. I challenge us. How many of us have gone on there and actually read this stuff? I got to admit, until I did this research, I really hadn't. Hopefully, after seeing the movie Sound of Freedom, some of you have. And so <clears throat> let's go to our uh, slide. Next slide. Commitment to end slavery in all its forms is rooted in the catechism of the Catholic Church. This is, this is our teaching. Comes from the Bible. Oh, Father, I don't follow the catechism. I follow the Bible. Well, have you read the catechism? It's all based on the Bible. And it forbids any act against human dignity. A sin against a person's dignity and fundamental human rights Read it, Catechism 2414. And this was reaffirmed at Vatican II in Gaudium et Spes, paragraph 27, said slavery, prostitution, the selling of women and children, and, dis and disgraceful work conditions where people are treated as mere tools for profit are infamies and are supreme dishonor to God. You are offending God. So to finish, couple more, just a little good things. There's a pontifical council for the pastoral care of migrants and itinerant people. And it's called On Human Trafficking. And here's what it says. I'm going to finish with just this little bit, and I'm going to show you a phone number and an email. But basically, it calls upon Congress to enact immigration reform. Undocumented persons. Okay, and I, here's one thing that I think the church has put its foot in its mouth. There are members of the church that seem to be opposed to some efforts in our Congress to control the borders and to form 
proper legal immigration. Now, you're, I know you're all going to write me letters here. I'm not making a political statement. I'm going to tell you why it involves Catholic social teaching, which I as a priest must do, and it is this. If you open the borders to a flood of undocumented persons, they will be eager to find work. But without any documentation, they are at the mercy of those giving them work. They will be easy prey for human traffickers because they will be petrified of illegal immigration and, and deportation. This is not mercy. Allowing somebody to go into a tiger cage is not mercy because they want to have fun. You're basically opening the door of the tiger cage. It, it, it's so backwards. So when, when some members of the church, not all, have taught that we just need to open the borders and allow everybody to flood in, do you realize the risk you're making to those people? The people now become high risk for predators and they can do nothing about it. A little Vietnamese family that I got to know, they came here to the United States illegally. And <clears throat> the aunt told me that the little girl disappeared. They think they know what happened to her, that she was kidnapped, but they couldn't go to the police. They couldn't even tell the police because they were here illegally. If they would have been brought in and followed the procedure and we had a procedure for them, immigration reform, they could then go to the police. Instead, the daughter has disappeared. This is not mercy. And so even the church, I think, is missing the point on this. This is not official. Immigration stance is not infallible. Please don't say, Father, you are a renegade priest because you're not following the teaching of the church. Whether you believe in immigration reform or not is not faith and morals, ex cathedra, infallible teaching of the Catholic Church. It's opinion. And you can agree or disagree. So the church, how's it doing its part? I finish by saying as a global institution, this is right, easily found, which is present in all source nations where trafficking comes from, as well as nations that serve as the markets for human trafficking, like the United States. So like the Philippines would be the source, children come from there. The United States is the end user. In all the nations, the Catholic Church is present, well positioned to identify and rescue survivors of human trafficking if people will involve them. In fact, the Catholic Church provides important social services to survivors in the US and around the world. Much more must be done and Catholics in our own country, you, me, we can help, particularly by educating fellow Catholics and others about this crime. Parishes, how many of you seen this? I haven't seen too many, can serve as a meeting place to discuss this issue and as a center for action to help identify survivors and provide them support. We call upon all Catholics, all of you, to seek ways to assist the churches, the parishes, the diocese, and local governments to help survivors and to prevent the future. And so lastly, what, what can you do? You can pray. You know, um, the International Day of Prayer for Victims of Human Trafficking, do you know when that was? We just passed it. Anybody know when the International Day of Prayer is? I'll give you a hint. It's on the feast day of St. Josephine Bakita. Mm -hmm. This is observed on February the 8th, okay? And we just passed this, but it's not too late to pray. The event was designated by the Vatican's Dicastri for Promoting Integral Human Development. Now, here's what it is. The Inter International Day of Prayer and Awareness Against Human Trafficking is observed on February the 8th. Again, the feast day of Josephine Paquita. Let's have Mark show her picture. Here's the picture of Sister Josephine Bikita. She was born in Sudan, okay, 1869, and Josephine was kidnapped and sold into slavery at age seven by traffickers sent to Italy. 
In 2000, Pope John Paul canonized her. So now she's Saint Paquita, concluding that she came to understand the profound truth of God, that God and not man is the true master of every human being, of every human life. She realized that in her slavery. They can't break me. They could even take my life, but they're not the owner. God is. God. God is the true master of every human being and of every human life. Now there's a couple other dates. January the 11th is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. So February 8th was the International Day of Prayer for Human Trafficking. January 11th is the National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. And in fact, let's have Mark go to our next slide. January is the National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. So slide 19 is the Human <clears throat> National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. So the month of January. All right. Now let's go to our next slide because July 30th is the World Day Against Trafficking in Persons. Look at those pictures there. Look at those pictures. Those are all humans, real people. Look at that cute little girl in the upper right. That upper right. I, 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 I looked at that. That's a real picture. That's a real victim. Um, if you look up at that picture, that little precious girl with the stuffed animal on the upper right, if that doesn't melt your heart, check your pulse. Um, very much needed. And then finally, last slide, how can you help? The National Human Trafficking Hotline is 24-7, English and Spanish. All right, so you can call one 888-373-7888. If you know someone or you're abused or you know someone or you can text be free to 233-733. Again, 233-733. And finally, if you'd like to chat with someone, go to humantraffickinghotline.org slash en so everybody there's a lot of resources through the catholic church there's a lot of help through the government agencies but there's it's trying to empty the ocean with a spoon you know somebody could say well i'd be even kind of like trying to empty a, a tank with a spoon well if enough people come with a spoon and and, and try to empty it they we will we can and so for this most vile of all crimes right next to abortion, I think we need to understand, first of all, the, the pure nature of this is evil. Satan would much rather come after human souls than commodities. Drugs, arms, wildlife, those are all illegal traits. This has become greater than those because he wants to deal in souls. And he knows he's got three ways to take souls in one human abuse. He's got the victim who could despair, give up, hate God, understandably so in some sense because of their trauma that they would face. He must pray for the victim. Two is the trafficker because Satan's got that soul. They're perpetrating this. And third is the end user, the predator. Satan's got three souls wrapped up in every instance. Let us pray. God will have mercy, most of all, on the victims. But please, if you know or you see something, report it. And let us really realize the importance of what's happening. Don't patronize the businesses that utilize human trafficking and raise awareness to those in your town, your schools, your, your, your churches, this is a major, major issue. And the only answer is God's mercy. It's the only answer. And, and, and so please realize that without God's mercy, none of this is, is, is going to work. You know, I'm going to start a special prayer thing through the Association of Marian Helpers. If Brother Mark can show the next slide, if you'd like to join us, please uh, go to micprayers.org. Um, the micprayers.org is a way, it, it only takes a couple seconds, 
doesn't cost anything, but you can join and unite with us. Uh, we'll be putting some prayers online for our Marian helpers, uh, for all of you to join us um, on our social media, praying for the end of human trafficking. I just filmed yesterday a Living Divine Mercy show for EWTN about human trafficking. Uh, that'll be showing in a couple weeks, so I invite you to watch that. Uh, the next next thing is a, a book uh, that I wrote about God's mercy. Um, so the next slide is you can get understanding divine mercy. It's a very hard thing to understand in a world like this. That's why this book, I, I believe, is very important. You can get that, um, a copy for yourself. And if you can't afford a copy, just contact me or my assistant, Peter. He's in today at 413-298-1303. I'll send you a copy. Um, or email him, peterjames at marion.org. He's in the office today. I'll send you a copy. Okay. Uh, next book, this probably is the most applicable, is the brother, Father Jason and I wrote, um, After Suicide, There's Hope for Them and You, but this book is not just about suicide. It's about any kind of suffering or loss. Are you a victim? Have you experienced a loss? This shows you the power of prayer and the power of God's mercy. Again, if you can't afford it, and especially if you've been a victim and you've lost someone you love or you've been tragically affected by something, I'll send you a copy. Okay? Um, again, um, you can find us at 800-462-7426 or shopmercy.org. And um, lastly, we do have some of our talks where I do talk about the mercy of God on the last slide there on the Explaining the Faith series of talks. You know, every week I, I, I bring up topics that I feel are so critically important. Um, this, is, this is one of them. Um, let us not neglect our duty by ignoring it, okay? Let us, again, even if it's just a prayer, even if it's just a prayer for uh, the victims um, and, and, and to end this, this awful trade. And with together, enough prayers, we can. God's mercy is greater than any sin, even human trafficking, even abortion. God's mercy is greater. Well, Father, give me some hope here. What's the answer? Pray, hope, and I would normally say don't worry, but in this case, I think we need to worry a little bit because without prayer and hope, nothing's going to change. And so with prayer and with hope, then things can change. And so we need to say to God, Lord, help use me. I pray for this situation. This is an evil of unprecedented, unprecedented proportion. And so praise be to God that you joined us for this talk. And remember, again, God's mercy is greater than any sin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everybody. God bless you, and we will see you next week. Thank you. Hell, too, is divided into various and countless circles. The lower the circle, the heavier the torment. The condemned soul knows about all the greatness, the power, and the beauty of God, and is also aware that it will never see him. It knows that its suffering is eternal, and that nothing can soothe or alleviate it. It is burned by an endless fire of desire and longing for happiness that will never again be experienced, and this fire devours and digests the condemned soul but never destroys it completely. The condemned soul has a full understanding of its own loss and of the righteousness of the punishment it suffers. It cannot love God, though it knows of his power and perfection. It cannot feel either repentance or regret, because these feelings would relieve the souls and give the impression that it is paying off a debt to God given by his love.
However, only negative feelings are available. Despair, pain, weakness, abandonment, and most of all, constant, unlimited hate for oneself and for everything. Whoever consciously rejected God during his lifetime will be rejected by him after death. The soul will go into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. There is no more salvation or return from there. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you've been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your breath I hear you wrestle with your S.O.S. I will send out an army to find you In the middle of the darkest night is true I will rescue you there is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS. Your SOS I will send out an army to find you In the middle of the darkest night It's true, I will rescue you I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hottest fight it's true i will rescue you i hear the whisper underneath your breath i hear you saying you have nothing left I will send out an army to find you In the middle of the darkest night It's true, I will rescue you I will never stop marching to reach you In the middle of the hardest fight It's true I will rescue you Oh, oh, oh He will rescue you My child you're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round. You can't seem to find the fighter within you, but I see it in you so. We're gonna walk it out and move mountains. We're gonna talk it out and move those mountains. We're gonna walk it out. And I'll rise up, I'll rise out the day And I'll rise up, 
I'll rise unafraid and I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again and I'll rise up highlight the ways and I'll rise up in spite of the pain and I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again for you When the silence isn't quiet And it feels like it's hard to breathe And I know you feel like dying But I promise we'll take the world to its feet And move those mountains And bring the world to its feet And move those mountains those mountains and I'll rise up I'll rise like the day and I'll rise up I'll rise unafraid and I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again for you like the day and I rise up in spite of my pain and I rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again and we'll rise up highlight the waves and we'll rise up in spite of the pain and we'll rise up and we'll do it a thousand times again like the eagles and we will rise rise like the eagles and we will rise we will rise up with you we will rise up with you Hear the softer falls The sun falls still on waters near the waterfalls Seven river streams come together Seven river streams come together Surging waters flow from paradise Hell rages when we fight with the everlight Weary souls, we bring them back to life With the everlight, with the everlight I was deceived by the shade, like the Pied Piper who played A sultry song, irresistible, irreversible, they say A land where all things always seem the same A land without angels, why they call it LA Dark faces pale against our rosy flame The mild-eyed, melancholy, loaded cedars came I'm Trying to teach y'all how to change the game While well, they distract from the youth, they obscure in the truth Assassinating like weapons that shoot They wage no war against your mind proof Poof, lying and stealing and robbing us blind Then they smile with sharp teeth while we sign on their dotted line It's not right 
Warriors return from war and the kingdom's compromised I fought in a whole other land, now I'm back to my home on the coast side I fought on the seven mountains I've climbed In fact, I've even died seven different times Had to put my broken body in the seven rivers Just to bring me back to life Seven different times When the Ankata hit my veins That nectar of the Everlight Seven different times Brought my weary soul back to life Restored my sound and my sight Now back in my suit of armor run I'm ready to ride Let's find the prisoners of war And bring them back alive with the Everlight The sweet music here, the softer falls As some fall still when waters near the waterfalls Seven river streams come together Seven river streams come together Surging waters flow from paradise Hell rages when we fight with the everlight Weary souls, we bring them back to life With the everlight, with the everlight Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder that occurs in one out of 54 children. As the prevalence of autism increases, it is even more important to know the red flags so that early identification can occur. Hi, I'm Dr. Shirley Cannon. Thank you for listening.